Okay. So the third method is by using rectangular component method. Meaning that in this method, you have to resolve all the given forces in component. So we say rectangular component. In component, the easiest way is we resolve into component X and Y. Okay. So this is the axis. X axis, Y axis. So we will resolve all the given forces into component X and Y and after that we can solve first in X direction and then the second one is in Y direction so we resolve directly into specific direction so how do we resolve that one okay so before we go so the equation okay so let's say we have the equation we need to have the equation P plus Q equal to R so again I will put in terms of magnitude and also direction. So magnitude of P is 10, magnitude of Q is 20, direction is 30, direction of this one is 40 degree. Okay, so I need to resolve this direction into y into x and the other one is into y okay same for this one and the difference here is uh, in previous two method we leave it here as unknown but for this case because we already resolve we need to resolve this one we need to assume the direction for this, this one uh, assume is mean that we save assumption we take the first quadrant normally i take the first quadrant okay so r is the thing that you didn't know so what we do is we assume the direction of R. Okay? So this part is just assume. Assume. Okay? So meaning that you, you assume it is on positive X and positive positive Y. Later on, if you get the negative, the negative value, you will uh, surely put it in opposite direction. So how do we resolve this one? Actually, in your books, this page 17 yeah okay uh, concept 2.8 okay 17 2.8 we already have this table shown to you how to resolve the force if given the first quadrant second quadrant uh, first and so on okay so it is already given to you this one okay you can look at this one and memorize or and try to understand how it is resolved okay i will explain a little bit okay uh, how to resolve so let's say we have this one I take this one okay so this is the actually the, the direction which is P and 30 degree this is X this is Y okay you need to resolve this one into X and Y direction okay if you still remember from the previous uh, method we have uh, the, the first method, let's say we have this one, these two component, we have Px, P plus Q, and then we have the, the R. Okay, so actually here we use the same method. The difference is, the this is the resolving force. The resolving force now, it is on X and Y direction, because we want to make sure that we know the direction. Only... Is it positive or negative? So we want to make it uh, simple to calculation. Okay, so now. Okay, so the way to resolve is you want to resolve into first into X, first and the second one into Y and you want to make sure that the result, the original force is in between the two resolving force. So I have to resolve here, one here, which is the x, the other one is dy. Okay, I resolve into y into x and y into y. Okay, another example. If I have this one, this is x, this is y. If my force is here, PQS for example, or F force. Okay, with the angle theta, 30 degree. No problem, 30 degree or something, no problem. So, you want to resolve 1 into x and y into y. So, you have to make sure that D 
this resolving force is in between the two this original force is in between the two resolving force so the first one you have to put it here this is fx and you cannot choose F fy upward because if you choose upward there is nothing here ok so you have to choose Fy downward, this is Fy, so that in between this, this is the original force, in between this one, this is the original force, you, may, you have to make sure that the original force is right in between the two resolving force, one more, if I have this as the force, this is my force, ok, so how do I resolve, I want to have this one, so this is the two part that I can resolve to make sure that the original force is right in between so this is Fy, this is Fx don't bother about positive negative later on when you choose the direction for positive negative you will put the positive negative now you just put the direction ok so this is how you how you resolve the force ok so now we have resolved this force how do you call it later on ok so if I resolve this, this one say so I have P Okay, the value is known equal to here 10 newton if I resolve it into these two and I call it as P okay so I will have two more unknown PX I didn't know PY I didn't know so I have to make sure that this PX and PY is in the term of P and this theta so that I eliminate the unknown it becomes something that we know so how we can uh, relate the P with PX okay so, for simple uh, memorizing, okay, this is the P. Taking this angle to X, so the PX equal to P cos theta. The one that you take the direction will be the cos. Okay, so the PX equal to P cos theta, so you know here is 10 cos cos 30 so if the x is cos the y must be sine so py equal to p sine theta or 10 sine sine theta ok that is the way if you want to just memorize the one the angle that you taken here to the x so x will be positive I'm, I'm telling this because there is two angles here. If you want to use 30 degree or here, you can use the other angle because you know this is 90. So this is 60 degree. Okay. So what happens if I'm using the 60 degree? So if I'm using the 60 degree, so this I'm taking from this force and take the 60 degree to this part. So the y will be cos. So if I'm using the 60 degree, it will be P y equal to 10 cos 60 now ok 10 cos 60 because I'm using the 60 degree ok so if the y is cos px equal to 10 sin 60 so you can choose either to use this angle or the other angle but you must have the correct notation so again the one that goes through uh, angle will be, will be cos the other one will be sin so what where this this come from if you still remember you already learned that uh, in uh, form 5 form 4 something like that ok if you look at this one and you relate to the first method that we use px plus py we, we draw the triangle ok so this is actually we have px plus py equal to p ok so meaning that I will start by Px plus Py equal to P. So this is my Px. Px. This is my start. Plus Py. Py. So this is my, my end. This is my, my P. This is 30 degree. Ok. So you say this, this one. We have learned that from the first method. Okay, we draw, start, point, put the first force, and then the second one, and then we have from start to end, we have the P. Okay, and you already learned this one a lot before during the matrix or from 4, from 5. 
what is by cos cos 13 equal to cos this one divided by hypotenuse ok cos bersebelahan hypotenuse so equal to px divided by by p so that's why you have the p equal to the px equal to p cos 13 ok say if you want to take the sign it is in front divided by hypotenuse so sine 30 equal to py divided by p so you have py equal to p sine 30 so this is how you understand why it is p cos why it is p sine but if you are you want to just directly memorize you can use this method the one that goes to through the angle will be cos the other one will be will be sine if you don't remember that one, come back to your basic. This is how you get the Px and Py. Why is it cos? Why is it sine? Okay? So, okay, uh, so that one you should remember. Okay.